Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. My name is Pooja Devedi. Welcome to Study IQ IS English. Make sure you do not miss these classes that premiere from Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. Whatever classes that I take here are also available in the PDF format on my Telegram channel, Pooja Devedi UPSC. If you have any questions regarding this examination, feel free to talk to me on my Instagram and follow me on my threads. So these are the various events that we have to cover from the perspective of our examination. First, let's look at this question. With respect to white phosphorus, consider the following statements. Irish nationalists in the late 19th century first used white phosphorus in a formulation that came to be known as Fenian fire. Upon exposure, if somebody gets exposed to white phosphorus, it can cause severe burns down to one's bone. And it is not considered a chemical weapon. So how many statements given above is or are correct? Recently, there were allegations that Israel has been using white phosphorus against the Gaza Strip and white phosphorus is actually not a chemical weapon that is why the regulation is pretty lagging behind. Why? Because whatever damage is caused with the use of white phosphorus it is because of the heat that it creates and not because of the toxicity that is why it is not a chemical weapon. Anything if it is very toxin in nature then it could be called as a chemical weapon. So third statement is correct. Okay. Upon exposure, if somebody is exposed to white phosphorus, white phosphorus is known to give severe burns that can go down to one's bone and it's really painful. So second is correct. Also, Finian fire. Finian fire, Finian is a term that is used as an umbrella term for all the Irish nationalists. And when they used it for the first time ever, it came to be known as Finian fire. Okay. So all the three statements are correct. All three will be the correct answer. It is a pyrophoric that ignites when it is exposed to oxygen. And it is in the category 1. That means it burns very spontaneously whenever it comes into contact with oxygen. It produces thick light smoke as well as intense 815 degrees Celsius heat. According to the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, it is in the category 1. And category 1 you can say elements are those that catch fire spontaneously when they are exposed to air. It is among the most unstable pyrophoric substances. It, is a, it has a distinct garlic smell and its primary military use is a smoke screen. It can be used as a smoke screen to shield the personnel. Also, it can hinder the tracking system for weapons. Okay, So, this is the primary use. Irish nationalists used it in the late 19th century for the first time and it became to be known as Finian fire. It is not considered a chemical weapon because whatever issues it creates, whatever injuries it gives, it is because of the heat as well as the smoke, not because of the toxicity. And the Convention on Conventional Weapons specifically puts it in the Protocol 3rd, which is actually signed by Palestine and Lebanon, but not Israel. It's not ratified by Israel. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to Ethics Committee. The Ethics Committee of the Rajya Sabha was constituted earlier than that of the Lok Sabha. The rules applicable to the Ethics Committee also apply to the Committees of Privileges. So, which of the statements given above is or are correct? Recently, the entire case of Mahua Moitra, which I have covered in detail on Study IQIS English, it has gone to Ethics Committee to be studied. It is looking into the affidavits which are being submitted. And she could also be suspended for breach of privilege. Generally, breach of privilege issues are dealt with the Committee on Privileges and not Ethics. But if there are certain allegations about the misconduct of a person, then yes, even Ethics Committee can look into it. Okay, So the Ethics Committee is different for Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Rajya Sabha's Ethics Committee came into existence in 1990. 7 and it was much earlier than Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha's ethics committee came into existence as an ad hoc committee only in the year 2000 but it became a permanent part of the Lok Sabha in the year 2015 pretty late okay. So first statement is correct because the ethics committee of Rajya Sabha was constituted earlier than the Lok Sabha and the rules which are applicable to the ethics committee also apply to the committees on privileges. There is a distinction that when we talk about ethics committee, it looks into the matters of misconduct by the members of the parliament. 
but if the committee of privilege has to look into the matter of breach of privilege it can consider both members of the parliament and somebody else some is someone else who is not a member of the parliament and they have conducted a breach of privilege okay so this is a distinction first is correct second is also correct both one and two will be the correct answer so the ethics committee of rajya sabha 1997 under the chairmanship of k r narayanan who was the then vice president also the uh, chairman of the rajya sabha he actually before that only 1993 vohra committee was formulated to in, you know investigate into the misconducting activities of the members of the parliament what kind of nexus does the mafia and the businessmen had with the politicians back then they used to get a lot of coverage in the uh, different houses of the parliament if they want to get some agenda furthered they could do it through politicians so that was what vohra committee was looking into so the lok sabha ethics committee the starting of it was very different in the 1990s a study group went to the parliaments of us uk and australia in order to understand if there is a misconduct from the members of the house what kind of committee should look into the matter so a study was done committee prepared this committee which was doing the study prepared the report put it in front of the various lok sabha sessions but because of the dissolution of the lok sabha it couldn't get studied properly but it became an ad hoc committee only in the year 2000 finally it became a permanent part of the uh, lok sabha in 2015 instead of the ethics committee more serious complaints actually goes to the privilege or special panels in the lok sabha the privileges breach of privilege there are certain privileges and immunities that are given to the members of the parliament according to article 105 and article 194 of the indian constitution and if these privileges are breached either by a member of the house or by somebody else then committee on privileges can take it into cognizance privileges committee talks about the breach of privilege or contempt of the parliament by mps or non mps in punishment it could give admonition reprimand suspension or even expulsion from the parliament ethics committee looks into the ethical or moral misconduct of the mps only remember this is a keyword because upsc can twist the words it looks into mps only and it recommends corrective action such as apology censure withdrawal of parliamentary facilities privileges or removal from parliamentary committee so it's a little lenient moving on with respect to the gaganyaan mission consider the following statements it envisages demonstration of human space flight capability by launching crew of 3 members to an orbit of 350 kilometers lvm3 rocket is identified as the launch vehicle for gaganyaan mission and the bay of bengal is the primary choice for splash down so how many statements given above is or are correct today only we saw the successful first flight test vehicle uh, you know mission demonstration mission i have already covered it in detail you can watch it on study iq is english pretty informative so yes this gaganyaan mission actually envisages demonstration of human space flight capabilities and it is going to show the capabilities of of course isro it was actually announced by the prime minister on 15th august 2018 that we are going to launch vyomanauts or astronauts through the gaganyaan mission and th those vyomanauts will go to the low earth orbit of up to 400 kilometers earlier the plan was that we are going to keep them for 7 days in the low earth orbit but now it has been reduced to 3 so it's a pretty complex mission because not only we have to send crew to the low earth orbit but also have to return them back to the earth and that is very complicated in nature so yes first statement is incorrect because here it is written 350 km actually it is 400 km and human rated lvm3 rocket is identified for this mission this is a you know revamped version of gslv mark 3 so don't get confused if question asks gslv mark 3 but yes they wouldn't do so because now it is much upgraded human rated hr lvm3 okay and the bay of bengal is the primary choice for splash down this is correct first is correct sorry incorrect because of 350 first is incorrect second is correct third is also correct two only will be the correct answer so this is the complete trajectory of today's demonstration this demonstration was done in order to see if the test vehicle will go up to an altitude and then in case of emergencies will the crew module separate from it or not and it has done it successfully so ascent was done by a test vehicle 
so this test vehicle has been specifically uh, created for such launches because if we time and again wait for PSLV and GSLV it is very time taking and secondly we also have to remain within our budget of approximately 9000 crore rupees so that is why it is much cost efficient as well as time efficient so we created a test vehicle when it went to went with the crew module it was carrying the crew module in which the crew will be there and after the ascent phase it finally separated from the crew module and touched down the test vehicle splashed down we could say at approximately 6 km to 10 km and then finally we have the crew module splash down at approximately 14 km from Sri Harikota okay and demonstration of human space flight capability is one of the basic aims by launching a team of three members these are being trained these people are being trained right now to an orbit of 400 km per three day mission bring them back safely and life support system will be provided to earth like environment in the crew space as in the crew module will have pressurized environment so that it can look like earth's environment it can feel like earth's environment and when the crew module will splash down in the bay of bengal it will be retrieved by a dedicated team of the indian navy okay moving on human rated lvm3 h lvm3 it has been developed specifically for this it has a solid stage liquid stage and cryogenic stage okay and it can take the crew module and the orbit the entire orbital module up to 400 kilometers it will also have crew escape system the ces this was demonstrated because sometimes it can happen that during emergency the crew needs to escape so that had to be found out set of quick acting high burn rate solid motors it has consider the following statements rafa crossing in the southern mo is the southernmost post of exit from gaza and borders egypt sinai peninsula Kerem Shalom is a solely commercial goods junction with Israel in southern Gaza and Iris is a crossing for people with Israel in northern Gaza. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Recently we saw that aid has been travelling from the Rafah border from Egypt that is carrying humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. The civilians who are dying aimlessly they are dying for no fault of their own. So as you can see this is the Rafah crossing. Through Rafah crossing Gaza shares a border, uh, sorry, through Rafa crossing, Gaza shares an aid border with Egypt. This is Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Other than this, we also have the Eris crossing in the northern Gaza. And this is a crossing between Israel and Gaza Strip. Also, as you can see, here is Kerem Shalom. And Kerem Shalom crossing, these two crossing, Kerem Shalom and also Eris. These are under the control of Israel. But if we talk about the Rafa, it is under the control of Egypt. Okay. And Kerem Shalom is for goods only, not for civilians. All right. Also, Israel and Egypt have registered the movements of goods and people in and out of Gaza since Hamas uh, took control of the territory in 2007 in a restricted manner. And according to the UN, in August 2023, it is up to Egypt if they want to allow the Gaza people in or not. It is up to them. So, it was found out in August 2023 that Egyptian authorities allowed 19,608 19, exits from Gaza but denied entry to 314 people. So, first statement is correct, second is correct and third is also correct. All three will be the correct answer. Moving on, consider the following statements in the Atlantic and Southern Hemisphere that is Indian Ocean and South Pacific, tropical cyclones receive name in alphabetical orders alternating between women and men's names. For the Indian Ocean region, a formula for naming cyclones was agreed upon in 2000. Biparjor was suggested by Bangladesh while Mocha was suggested by Yemen. So how many of the statements given above is or are not correct? Sometimes UPSC will also play with you by putting correct statements altogether. But in order to create doubt in your minds, it can ask you not correct. So remember, it doesn't have to be, if it has put not, that doesn't have to mean that one statement could be wrong, okay? So in the Atlantic and Southern Hemisphere, yes, tropical cyclones receive names in an alphabetical manner that alternates between the name of men and women. So first statement is correct. It is actually only in the year 2000 when a formula was agreed upon in order to name those cyclones that originate in the uh, Indian Ocean region, 13 countries 
have been made responsible for it and Bipar Joy was suggested by Bangladesh while Mocha was suggested by Yemen and Mocha was uh, actually taken from a name of a small fishing village where coffee is cultivated and it was given by Yemen. So all three are actually correct. None will be the correct answer over here because none are not correct. A low pressure area over southeast and a deep depression has been formed in the Indian Ocean region, specifically Arabian Sea. And it is expected to intensify into a cyclonic storm by today. And of course, by tomorrow, we are going to see more inter intensification. This is the second cyclonic storm in the Arabian Sea this year. And it will be named as Tej. Tej is the second name in the second list. First name was Biparjoy. Okay. So moving on, if we talk about the Indian Ocean, a formula was agreed upon in 2000 and Bangladesh, India, Iran, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Thailand, UAE and Yemen. These countries are responsible for naming the cyclones that originate here. It also, we have to keep certain criteria in mind. The names should be easy to remember and pronounce. They shouldn't be controversial or offensive in nature. And of course, they respect diversity, so variety of languages are selected and also people can relate to them. Cyclone Mocha was named by Yemen. It's a small fishing village in the country known for coffee production. Bipar Joy was suggested by Bangladesh. So it is the responsibility of choosing a name for cyclone in North uh, Indian Ocean. It falls upon the IMD. IMD collected 169 names, 13 from each of the 13 countries. And that was done in 2020 for the upcoming cyclones. These names are divided into lists with 13 names in each of them. List 1 was exhausted when Mocha hit. And Viparjoy was from second list. It was the first name. Tej is the second name in the second list. Okay. Consider the following statements. Mangroves are salt tolerant trees and shrubs. Typical of estuarine and intertidal regions. The Sundarbans, the largest contiguous mangrove forest in the world, completely lies in India. Mangrove represents a boreal forest ecosystem. So what do we have to see? How many of the statements given above is or are correct? This is a practice question for you all. So make sure you practice it and make sure you comment the correct answer in the comment box. Also, let me take the names of those students who have answered the last question correctly so that you can answer this question as well. Bear with me a moment. C was correct. Vijay, Simran, Swati, Shubham, Kushal, Shruti. Dr. Priya Darshan, Mansi, Preeti Kumari, Devi Pras, uh, ne, not Devi Prasad, no, uh, it's actually C, okay, Gopesh has answered it correctly, Padmashri, Pragati, User, Abhishek, Unnati, Manish, Raghuveer, Abul, thank you so much, Vivek, no Vivek, it's actually C, my mobile phone, answer this as well, so that I can take up your names in the next class, thank you.